are some of the key themes and trends you're most bullish on from day one? I mean, the energy here is so high. Everyone is talking about how to leverage more technology. One of the key trends I'm hearing all retailers talk about is how to use more video going forward. That could be a combination of short video, long video, live video. Lots of retailers are asking questions about these topics, how to find the right host, the right seller to host these videos. But there's a lot of talk about just incorporating more technology into our everyday shopping experiences. That said, we're looking at inflation. We're looking at interest rates. All of this is really putting pressure on consumers. How are retail companies dealing with this and, and how are consumers going to respond? I think retailers are thinking about how to decrease the space between brand, retail, and end customer, to foster more brand loyalty, to deliver better customer experiences, to make sure customers have more confidence in the things they buy before they purchase them. And so examples like using video or using personalized chat or having these one-on-one -on -one expert recommendations are all ways that brands can make sure that consumers are more confident in their purchases. Now, your panel today focused on China as a global e-commerce player, and we know that, you know, in the Chinese economy, Chinese uh, shopping economy, there are so many different kinds of experiences that have yet to sort of translate to a global audience. Uh -huh. Talk to us about what you see there that has the most promise and whether or not you see some of these trends catching on around the world. For sure. I'd say the biggest e-commerce trend in China over the last two, three years would be live shopping. Live shopping has taken China by storm, and it's really changed the way lots of brands and retailers are even thinking about their marketing budgets. And so you can buy everything on live video in China now, everything from medical procedures to clothing to fruit farming. Anything you can think of that can be purchased <laughs> online can be purchased through online video. And so I think that trend is now showing that it has lots of promise in the U.S. There are plenty of companies now experimenting with live video, and they're seeing really great results. You've talked about the rise of shop attainment in the past, and I'm curious which companies you think are at the forefront of this. How do you, for example, think yeah. about Instagram versus TikTok versus Facebook versus Snapchat when it comes to video commerce? I think lots of companies are going to put video commerce at the forefront just because video is such a fantastic way to sell things. If you grew up watching infomercials, you know they are effective. And having customer testimonials, having live demos, unboxing, all of these things are just fantastic ways to sell product and get customers more excited about the things that they're buying. I think you're right. All of these large platforms are going to be experimenting with shop attainment and having more video enabled commerce. I also think lots of brands are going to attempt putting it on their own websites and on their own apps. And I also believe there's going to be third party apps that rise as new shop um, shopping video platforms that are going to do tremendously well. Now, I have to ask you about what's going on in the broader environment, what's happening with funding and valuations. We just saw Instacart mark its own valuation down from $39 billion to $24 billion. I know this is a company that Andreessen Horowitz invested in at an earlier stage. Are we going to see a slew of, of other markdowns? I mean, is this happening at a, at a, a lot of companies? Well, I can't speak about that particular company, but I will say that I tend to focus on the very early stage. So I'm talking about pre-seeds, seeds, and A's, and so forth. And a lot of these companies have a really long time horizon, 5, 10, 15 years. And so we're less concerned about near-term shocks to the market, and that wouldn't change our focus on how we invest. So are you saying the broader economic environment, the uncertainty that we're seeing, what's happening with inflation and interest rates, that's not really factoring into your calculus at all at Andreessen Horowitz in terms of the early investments that you're making? At the early stage, I don't think we're that phased by near-term changes to the market because, again, we have a very long-term horizon and so do our founders. Many of them are building for 5, 10, 15 years outward. So let's talk about what you are looking to invest in, in terms of companies, in terms of trends. What are you most bullish on as we come out of the pandemic, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, yeah. but we are facing this kind of uncertainty, a future of hybrid work. You know, Where are you placing your bets? 
I think COVID brought a lot of behaviors forward in a really great way in the sense that now we're much more accustomed to doing things through video. We're more used to ordering things on our phone. So I actually think it accelerates a lot of the trends that were going to happen anyways. I'm looking at new forms of commerce, how people are creating new formats, whether it's video or AI driven. Um, I'm particularly excited about companies that use AI at the forefront, meaning how are they rethinking an entire experience with AI to begin with or video to begin with. So I'm excited about AI and video in particular. And how do you think, like, take us five years out. How will we be shopping differently because of AI, because of video, let's say five years from now? I think video shopping is going to be very common mainstream behavior five years out, which means that you are going to be shopping from all kinds of platforms, it means you're not just going to be shopping on e-commerce platforms even, you'll be shopping from social media platforms or other platforms that you spend a lot of time on. Um, I also think with AI, that means you're going to have much better personalization. And that's going to improve the shopping experience for everyone across the board. Ideally, that means fewer Turns. Ideally, that means you're buying things that fit your style. You're buying things that naturally delight you. So AI is just a wonderful way to give a more personalized shopping experience. So is this like a smarter version of QVC on social media? In some ways, QVC, of course, is one of the original shopping video platforms. Um, but I think if you look at what happened in China in the last two, three years, you get a glimpse of what's possible in the US. And in many ways, China video shopping is now one of the most popular ways to shop. And people are doing it on their smartphones all throughout the day. And you can buy literally anything on a online video shopping. And it's great because you can ask the host questions. You can get real-time answers. There's a lot of limited time discounts. If you think back to your infomercial days, they would say, order now, order in the next 15 minutes and get a freebie or give one to, you know, get an extra one to give to a friend. All of those limited time promotions, exclusive drops, special pricing, all of those things are much more possible through live video. And what is the role of the creator economy in all of this? I mean, are influencers replaced by AIs? I mean, are these real people still selling <laughs> us stuff or not? I think influencers are still really important. Creators are important because they are curating products and they are building trust with their end viewers, right? There are particular folks that I watch on YouTube and I trust the recommendations they're making based off the background, based off the things they've recommended or didn't recommend in the past. And so creators are still really important as either creators of products or curators. And their curation is really valuable because it's giving me a better glimpse and more information about what I'm purchasing. 